This is how we say good evening in the Tanakh language. So one more time. Good evening, everyone. So good evening, everyone. My name is Nitzdach Anna. That's my Tanakha name. My English name is Joe Pierre. Um, and I am uh, Chief Joe Pierre, or as you can see on the screen, Nasuk and Joe Pierre that I have written up there. That is the Tanakha way of saying chief. And so real easy, actually, Nasukin. And so that's how uh, Tanakha people will say chief. And so I am Nasuk and Joe Pierre, and I'm really glad to be with you. And I just want to say thank you to Pamela and to JCI uh, Kootenai chapter for inviting me this evening. When I first communicated with Pamela back in the summertime, uh, we talked about me joining the group, the JCI group. And, um, and so at the time, we were thinking that maybe we might have 18 to 20 people online. Uh, but it has grown to this. And I see now the number just keeps going up. It's now 237. And so I'm really excited about, uh, about everybody who's come and joined this evening. So thank you so much for, for taking some time tonight to, to join us online. And so I know that um, what you heard for tonight was that I was going to be sharing the Tanakha creation story this evening. Um, oh, the Tanakha creation story. My grandmother, in that last year of her life, whenever she would tell this story for me, she would always start this story by saying, this is a story that takes place a long time ago. This is a story that takes place in a time before there were Aksmaknik here on the earth. Aksmaknik, that's the Tanakha word for human beings. And so this story takes place a long time ago before there were Aksmaknik, before there were human beings on this earth. It takes place in a time when the Tukskamna, that's the animals, the creatures, when the Tukskamna ruled the world. I used to love the way my grandmother would start the story. And so this is a story that takes place a long time ago. Now at this time, when this story happens, Napika, that is the Tunacha name for the great spirit. Napika, the creator of all things. Napika, God. Napika sent out word to all of the chiefs of that time, all of the Nasukans, all of the chiefs of all of the living beings of the world, that there was to be this gathering. Nepika, the great spirit, wanted a gathering of all of the Nasukans, all of the chiefs of all of the, the living beings at that time to come together because Nepika had something important that he needed to share with the chiefs. And he had something important that he needed to ask the chiefs. And so this gathering happened. There was this gathering, this huge gathering of all the chiefs, of all the living beings of the world. They all came together for this gathering. And when they had all gathered, Nepika appeared before them and said, the reason why I have asked you to be here today, the reason why I've gathered all of you chiefs is because I have something important to tell you. And I have an important question for you. Now, the thing that I have to tell you is this. Soon, very, very soon, the Aksmaknik will be here on the earth. The Aksmaknik are coming to the earth and they will be here very soon. Remember, Aksmaknik, the Tanakh word for human beings. And so that was Nepika's message, that the human beings were coming to the earth and that they would be there soon. And his question for all of the chiefs, the question that he had for all of those chiefs was Nepika wanted to know what they would offer to the human beings, what it is that they would give to the human beings when they came to the earth. And so one 
of the first chiefs to put up their hand and stand up to offer what it is that they would do is Tupka, Tupka, the chief of the deer. Tupka stood up and said, oh, well, I give myself to the human beings. I give my whole self to the human beings. I give my, my flesh for food, my skin for clothing, my bones and my antlers for tools for the human beings. I give my whole self to the human beings. As long as the Aksmaknet, the human beings, remember to say my prayer and sing my song, I will always be there for them. And so it went. One after another, the chiefs, they all started standing up, saying what they would do for the human beings. And they all had that same message as Tsupka. Say my prayer, sing my song, and I will always be there. One of the next chiefs that stood up was Nupko, the bear, the chief for the bears. Nupko stood up and said, oh, well, I, I give myself to the human beings. I give my whole self, my flesh for food, my skin for clothing and for shelter for the human beings. And if the human beings ever need help spiritually, I will be there for them. As long as they sing my song. Remember to say my prayer. I will always be there for them. And so it went one after another. The chiefs are standing up saying what they would do for the human beings. Now, some of the chiefs that stood up said, I will have nothing to do with the human beings. I will do my best to stay away from them. They will hardly ever see me. I will hardly ever see them. I will do my best to stay away from them. Now, one of the chiefs that had this message was Swa, the cougar. Swa said, I will stay away from those human beings as much as I can. But if they ever need my help spiritually, I will be there for them as long as they sing my song and say my prayer. And so it went. The chiefs were standing up one after another saying what it is that they would do for the human beings. Pretty soon the, the bird chiefs were joining in, saying what they would do for the human beings. And then the fish chiefs, the fish chiefs were standing up and saying what they would give to the human beings. And they all had that same message, sing our song, say our prayer, and we will always be there. And soon after that, the plants, the plants started to stand up. Because remember, this was a gathering of all the living beings in this world, and the plants were there. And so the plants were offering themselves to the human beings for, for food and for medicine and for fiber, for material, for making things. As long as we remember their song, and their prayer. Chawiyah, that's the little huckleberry. Chawiyah was there. And so Chawiyah stood up and said, I offer myself for food for the human beings. And so it went, one after another, standing up, all saying what they would do. Pretty soon it was time for the trees. The trees started to stand up, saying what they would do for the human beings, building material and tools, as long as we remember their songs and their prayers. And then the rocks, the rocks started to stand up. That's right, the rocks were there as well, because the rocks are alive. If you think about it. Here in our mountains here, we have these mines and they're taking the rocks out of our mountains. And why? Because those rocks have energy. And energy is life. The rocks are alive. And the rocks offered themselves to the human beings. As long as we remember their song and their prayer. And so it went. Now, as you can imagine, this meeting would go on for a long time. In fact, this meeting went on for weeks because there are so many living beings in this world, and they were all there saying what they would do for the human beings. And so this meeting, it went on for weeks. Now, while this meeting was happening, there were these two little sisters, these two little birds that decided that they were going to go fishing. They didn't have to be at that meeting. They weren't chiefs, they weren't Nasukan. And so these two little sisters, they decided that they were going to go fishing down at a place that we Tunacha, we call Akankami. 
Akan kami. Um, in English today, people like to call that place Bonner's Ferry. It's on the Kootenai River down in Idaho. And so these two little sisters, they went down to Akan kami to go fishing, these two little birds. And when they got to the river, the bigger sister, the older sister, said to the little sister, hey, hey, you know what? I think if I got out there further, further out in there into the water where it's deeper, I think I could catch bigger fish. And so that big sister, she starts to wade into the water. And as soon as she enters into the water, the little sister starts to freak out. No, no, don't go in the river. Don't go in the river. The Yawunik, the Yawunik might get you. Wow, the Yawunik. The Yawunik was this large giant water monster that lived in the Kootenai River and the Columbia River. Because at this time, a long time ago, back then, the two rivers, the Kootenai and the Columbia, they were joined together in one big water system. And the, the Yawunik lived in these two rivers. The Yawunik was a giant. The Yawunik had this big giant appetite. He would eat anything that came down to the river for a drink. Gishkashi, that's an elk. If an elk were to come down to the river to get a drink, well, Yawunik would eat him. Even Kaucha, that's a grizzly bear. Even if Kaucha, the grizzly bear, were to come down to the river for a drink, well, Yawunik would eat him too. It didn't matter how big or how small for that matter. Even if the smallest of small little animals, Intuk, that's a mouse. Even if just a little mouse were to go to the river for just a tiny little drink, well, Yawunik would eat him too. It didn't matter how big or how small. And so, as you can imagine, the animals, the Tukskamna, the animals and the birds, they were scared of Yawunik. You might say Yawunik was a bit of a menace. No, no, don't go in the river. Don't go in the river. The Yawunik, the Yawunik might get you. The big sister, oh, it's okay. I just want to get out here further where it's deeper because I think I could catch bigger fish. And so that big sister, she keeps wading out into the water and it's getting deeper on her as she goes. And the little sister, she's on shore and she's freaking out. She does not want her sister in there. No, no, the Yawunik, the Yawunik. Eventually, the little sister decides, I've got to get my sister out of the river. I've got to get her out of there. And so the little sister goes into the river as well. And just as she's reaching to grab her big sister, to pull her big sister out of the river, the Yawunik comes up out of the water and swallows them both. Swims away. They're gone. Well, these two sisters, they had a brother. And their brother's name is Yamakpash. Yamakpash, he's a woodpecker, a red-headed woodpecker. And Yamakpash, he finds out that his two sisters have been swallowed up by the Yawunik. Oh, and as you can imagine, he's, he's sad. Yamakpash is sad that his sisters are gone. He's sad. But more than being sad, he's, he's mad. He's mad at that Yawunik for taking his sisters. He's mad. And he decides something has got to be done about that Yawunik. Something has got to be done. And I'm going to be the one to do it. But I might need some help. And then he remembers Nachmuks and the giant. Yes, Nachmuktsin the giant. I should go ask Nachmuktsin for help. I think Nachmuktsin would help me. Well, Nachmuktsin the giant. This is a giant of the land. Nachmuktsin the giant. He's so tall. He's so big that if he were to stand upright, he would hit his head on the ceiling of the sky. And so therefore, Nachmuktsin, he actually travels around on his hands and knees. Nachmuktsin the giant. He's Nasupin, he's chief of all the land animals. And so Yamakbash goes to him and tells him the story about his sisters and, and the Yawunik and 
how he wants to do something about the Yawunik. And Nachmulkten agrees. Nachmulkten says, you're right. You are very right. We should do something about that Yawunik. That Yawunik has been breaking the law. That Yawunik is going around just killing at will, killing whoever he wants to kill and consuming as much as he wants. He's breaking the law. We should form a hunting party and hunt him down and kill him. Oh, hey, that's a pretty good idea. That, that, that's a great idea. Yes, let's do that. And so word goes out that this hunting party is being formed. And there's animals and birds from all around that come to join this hunting party. One of the first ones to come along is Skinkoots. Skinkoots, the coyote. Oh, that Skinkoots, that coyote, he comes running along. Hey, hey, I heard you guys are putting together a hunting party. Can I come with you? Please, please, can I come with you? Look, I brought my own spear. It's a really good spear, I promise. I made it all by myself. Can I come with you, please? Oh, sure, Skinkoots, you join up with us. And so this hunting party is formed. And they got word, they heard that the Yawunik had been sighted up by a Kiskanuk now. A Kiskanuk, remember that area where my grandfather Andrew was from, up on the Columbia River by Windermere and Fairmont in that area. And so the hunting party, they go up there and they find the Yawunik in the Columbia River. And so they split up. There's animals on both sides of the river and there's birds flying above and they start to chase the Yawunik. And that Yawunik starts swimming as hard and as fast as he can towards the south. And he swims from the Columbia River right into the Kootenai River. Because remember, at this time, when this story happens, the Kootenai and the Columbia, they're joined together in one big, huge river system. And so the Yawunik is able to go from the Columbia right into the Kootenai and continue swimming as hard and as fast as he can towards the south. And that hunting party, they're chasing after the Yawunik. And that Yawunik is swimming towards the south. And Skinkoots, the coyote, Skinkoots, he's running along with that hunting party too. But he's not really paying attention to where he's going. He's, he's a coyote. And so he's more interested in the sights and the sounds and the, and the smells. Oh, the smells. He's, he's a coyote, right? And so he's more interested in, in those smells. Oh, oh, that's a good smell over there. Oh, oh, that's even a better smell over there. And so Skinkoots is really not paying attention to where he's going. And so Skinkoots, the coyote, he trips and he falls. He tumbles and eventually he lands in the river. He splashes down in the river. And as soon as Skinkoots ends up in the river, splashes down into the river, he starts to freak out. Oh no, help, help me, please help me. Get me out of the river. Yawunik, Yawunik's going to get me. And so Nachmuks and the giant reaches over, grabs up this handful of wasa, and he reaches out towards Skinkoots and he says, hey, Skinkoots, you grab on here. And Skinkoots grabs onto that wasa and he pulls him to shore. And Nachmuts and the giant looks down at his hands and he sees that he has this handful of wasa. So he says, we will name this place wasa so that we can remember where Skinkoots got into trouble here and he was saved using wasa. And so wasa, that's a, that's a Tanakha name for that place. Wasa, in English, it's the name for the horsetail plant. The horsetail rush, horsetail reed. In Tanakha, we call that plant wasa. And so that place there, right close to the Kootenai River, that's a Tanakha name for that place. And the chase continues. Yeah, Wuna keeps on swimming as hard and as fast as he can towards the south. He goes past that place where the St. Mary's River joins the Kootenai River. Well, that's Akam, where the St. Mary's joins the Kootenai. That's Akam, that's my home community. And so he swims past that place and he continues swimming towards the south in the Kootenai River. And that hunting party, they keep on chasing him. But very soon, they have to stop. Now, the reason why they have to stop is because there's this um, 
tiny little fella, this small little fella sitting beside the river. And when he sees the hunting party coming towards him, he stops them. Hey, whoa, whoa, stop, stop. Where are you going? What are you doing? And so they stop and they talk to this little fella, tell him about the Yawunik and the hunting party, how they're hunting the Yawunik. And so this little fella, oh, that's a great idea. That sounds like a great idea. Can I come with you? Can I be a part of the hunting party? Of course you can, Mayo. You join up with us. And Nachmoks and the giant says, we will name this place Mayok so that we can remember where the weasel joined the hunting party. Mayok is the Tanakh name for the weasel. And so today, some of you might be familiar with that little place just outside of Cranbrook. If you're ever on the road heading towards Jaffrey, just a, a little ways out of town, there's that, it's called the Mayok settlement area. It's right at the base of Baker Mountain. Mayok is a Tanakh name for that place. That's where the weasel joined the hunting party. And the chase continues. Yeah, Wuna keeps on swimming as hard and as fast as he can all the way down towards the south, down to this place we call Akswak, Akswak. Today, it's known as Libby down in Montana. There's now a big, huge dam on the river there. Akswak is the Tanakh name for that place. And down there in that part of the world, northwestern Montana, northern Idaho, well, in Tunaka, we call that part of the world Skinkuts Amakas. That's the land of the coyote, northwestern Montana, northern Idaho. And if you know the Kootenai River, eventually it turns back towards the north. And we go past the Kankami, that place where the two sisters went fishing, um, Bonner's Ferry. And eventually we end up into what we call Atspu Amakas. Atspu Amakas is the land of the Wolverine, today known as the Preston Valley area. Atspu Amakas, the land of the Wolverine. Eventually, that Yawunik swims into the Kootenai Lake and the west arm of Kootenai Lake, and they continue chasing the Yawunik. Now, in the west arm of Kootenai Lake, there's this place known as Akyamkhup. Akyamkhup. And what that means in English is the place where you can see to the bottom of the water. It's so clear there. Akyamkhup. Now today, in English, people like to call that place Nelson. Nelson. In Tanakha, we call it Akyamkhup, the place where you can see to the bottom of the water. And that Yawuna keeps on swimming, eventually swimming back into the Columbia River at Kixichuk, Kixichuk, today known as the Castlegar area. And so now Yawunik has swum into the Columbia River and he's turned towards the north and he's swimming up towards the north now. And the hunting party, when they get to the Columbia River, they continue chasing that Yawunik towards the north. But very soon, they have to stop. Once again, the hunting party has to stop. Now, the reason why they have to stop this time is because they have come to a place known as Ak and Kanuk. Ak and Kanuk. Now, what it was is this big, huge cliff beside the river. There was this big bank of rock, a big cliff beside the river. And in that cliff, there was a crack. And the belief was that if you're traveling north on the Columbia River, when you get to Ak and Kanuk, when you get to that cliff with the crack, you take out your bow and arrow, you aim for that crack. And if your aim is true, if you can hit that crack with your arrow, then you can continue your journey. It will be safe. But if you aim and you shoot and you miss, maybe you better just stop and wait for a few days. Might not be safe. That was the belief there at Akintanuk. Now, my grandmother told me that when we translate that word into Tanakha, or I mean into English, from Tanakha into English, that it, uh, it sort of means um, arrow rock is kind of how she described it to me, or that rock where you shoot your arrow. Ak is the Tanakha word for arrow. Ak and Kanuk was the name for that place. Now, honestly, I don't know if that place is still above the water. It might be under the water now because of the dams on the river. Um, but that was over in the West Kootenays on that portion of the Columbia River, Ak and Kanuk. Now, over in that part of the world, the West Kootenays, we Tanakha call that Mitzkakas Amakas. 
I always love that Tanakha word, mitzkakas. That's a beautiful word to me. Mitzkakas translates as chickadee. And so mitzkakas amakas, the land of the chickadee, that's the West Kootenays. And that, yeah, Wona keeps on swimming towards the north as hard and as fast as he can. And that hunting party, they're chasing him. And they go all the way past this place we call Dunwakin Mituk Mitzkakas. <laughs> it's quite a mouthful, hey? Dunwakin Mituk Mitzkakas, today known as Revelstoke. Up around the big bend of the Columbia River. And now they're swimming back towards the south once again, past this place we call Aknukhuk which today people call Golden. And then just a little ways past Golden, just a little ways south of Golden, the Yawune does something that they really didn't expect. The Yawune just stops swimming. He stops swimming. And so eventually the hunting party, they come up and they see the Yawune lying there in the river he has stopped swimming and he's just lying there in the water, barely moving at all. And so he's resting. He has stopped to rest. It's a long journey, right? And, and so the Yawunik has stopped to rest. And the hunting party, they come up and they see the Yawunik lying there in the water. And so right away, Skinkoots, the coyote, oh, that's Skinkoots. Hey, hey, please let me go get him. Let me go get him. Look, I brought my own spear. It's a really good spear, I promise. Made it all by myself. Please let me go get him. Okay, Skinkoots. Okay, you coyote, you go get him. And so that coyote starts to sneak up on the Yawunik. Gets right close to the Yawunik, right beside the Yawunik, raises up his spear. And just as he's about to come down with that spear, the Yawunik notices him and starts to swim. And Skinkoots comes down with his spear and just catches him on the fin, just grazes the fin of that Yawunik. And from the fin comes this little trickle of blood. And that little trickle of blood, well, it leaves the river. And it flows up into the mountains. And that little trickle of blood, it turns into a creek. And Nachmuks and the giant says, we will name this place Yaknosuki, so we can remember this little trickle of blood that's turned into this creek. Yaknosuki will be the name for this place. Now, Today, in modern times, if you're ever on the road that goes between Radium and Golden, you know that little stretch of highway between Radium and Golden? There's that tiny little hamlet of a place that's called Brisco. Well, that's Yaknosuki. That's the Yaknosuki area. Just close to Brisco, there's this creek that flows from the mountains, and that's Yaknosuki, that trickle of blood that turned into that creek. And yeah, when it got away. Once again, Yawunik is swimming towards the south as hard and as fast as he can. Now he is in the part of the world that we call Aknokuham Amakis, which means the land of the eagle, the Columbia Valley. Aknokuham Amakis, the land of the eagle. And that Yawunik swims as hard and as fast as he can all the way down to Skinkuts Amakis. That's the land of the coyote, northwestern Montana, northern Idaho. Back up through Atsku Amakis, the land of the Wolverine, the Creston Valley area. Over into Mitzkakas Amakis, the land of the chickadee. Up around the big bend of the Columbia River, back into Aknokuham Amakis. And so completes the circle of the journey. Around and around in those two rivers, the Yawunik swims for weeks, months go by, and they just continue chasing him. Around and around in those two rivers, all the way down to the south, Skinkuts Amakas, and back up to the north through Mitzkakas Amakas, and all the way over to the east and back to the west, around and around in those two rivers they go. And weeks go by. Until one day, the hunting party now find themselves over in Mitzkakas Amakas, the West Kootenays, the land of the chickadee. And once again, they are stopped. Now this time, they are stopped by some laughter. 
There's this, this big belly kind of laughter coming from the mountains, coming from somewhere. And so they stop and they're, they're trying to find the source of this laughter. This, oh, 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 this big belly kind of laughter. And so the hunting party, they're looking and finally they see sitting up on the side of the mountain. Kikong. The wise old spirit, Kikong, is sitting on the side of the mountain laughing away. And they say to Kikong, Kikong. What are you laughing at? And Kikong looks at them all and he says, Oh, well, I'm laughing at all of you. I'm laughing at all of you, you hunting party. I've been sitting here on this side of this mountain now for weeks watching. Every couple of days you come running past you, chasing that Yawunik. You're never going to catch him. He's too big. He's too strong. That's what's making me laugh. And then he turns his attention towards Nachmurtzen, that giant. And he says, Nachmurtzen, you giant, why don't you use your son? Use your strength. Cut across the mountains. Go to that place where the two rivers join together. Use your size and your strength and move the earth there and, and cut the two rivers off from one another. And the next time Yawuna comes swimming down from the north, well, you're going to have him trapped. That's a pretty good idea. That, that's, that's a great idea. And so the hunting party, they decide to split up. Nachmuz and the giant, he uses his size and he cuts across the mountains and he goes to that place where the two rivers join together. The rest of the hunting party, they continue chasing Yawunik up towards the north. Now, when Nachmuz and the giant gets to that place where the two rivers join, he uses his size and he uses his strength and he moves the earth there and he cuts the two rivers off from one another, forming the Columbia Lake. And sure enough, just like Kikum said, the next time that Yawuna came swimming down from the north, well, he was trapped, trapped in the newly formed Columbia Lake. He no longer had a way to get to the Kootenai River. And so he was trapped. And the honor of killing the Yawuna the honor of killing the Yawunik goes to Yamakpash, that red-headed woodpecker, the brother of those two sisters. He <laughs> kills the Yawunik. <laughs> I didn't expect things to fall off my desk when I did that. <laughs> but he kills the Yawunik. And Nachmuz and the giant drags the Yawunik out of the water, up onto the land. And he starts tear him, tearing him apart, tearing him to pieces, handing out the meat to the animals and the birds so that they can eat. Eventually, he grabs up the white swim bladder organ. And he scrunches up that white swim bladder organ. And he scatters it in all different directions around the area. And he says, this will be the white race of people. They will be large in numbers and they will be powerful. And then he reaches down and he grabs up the black kidney and he scrunches up that black kidney from the Yawunik and he scatters it in all different directions around the world. And he says, this will be the black race of people. They will be large in numbers and they too will be powerful. And then he reaches down and he grabs up the roe, the eggs, and he scrunches up that row and he scatters it in different directions around the world. And he says, this will be the yellow race of people. They will be large in numbers and they too will be powerful. And then he looks at his hands. And his hands are covered in blood. And so he picks up some grass. And he uses that grass to wipe the blood off his hands. And the blood falls to the ground where he's at. And he says, this will be the red race of people. They will be small in numbers, but they too 
will be powerful. <laughs> and then they realize, they realize that they are the ones to fulfill Nefika's prophecy of the human beings coming to the earth. That is because of them and what they've just done, that they have fulfilled Nefika's prophecy. And they're happy. They're so happy that they could do this, that they could be a part of this, that they start to celebrate. Nah, Mooks and the giant is so happy that he forgets himself and he stands upright to celebrate, but he hits his head on the ceiling of the sky. And he too falls over and dies. Nachmuktsin's head went all the way down south to this place we call Tulhoknana, Tulhoknana, today known as Missoula, down in Montana. And Nachmuktsin's feet, they went all the way north, all the way north to this place we call Yakiriki, which today is known as the Yellowhead Pass. And his body, Nachmuktsin's body, it formed the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> and Nepika, the creator, Nepika, the great spirit, Nepika, says to those very first human beings, you have just lost a giant of the land and a giant of the water. It is now your responsibility to remember, to protect the water and the land. And the animals, the Tukskamna, they told that story to the human beings. And the human beings told that story to their children and their grandchildren all through time sharing that story with the children and the grandchildren until, well, <laughs> about 50 years ago now, my grandfather was sharing that story with me. I'm so happy to have the opportunity to be able to share that story with all of you this evening. It's a story that's been with me for pretty much my entire life. And it's a story that means a lot to me. And so it, it means a lot to me that so many of you have, have joined in tonight. Um, I want to go back into the story just a little ways because there is actually something that I forgot to tell you <laughs> when I was telling the story. And it's at that part, you know, when Nachmuktsin was tearing apart the Yawunik and just before he goes to creating the human beings, um, when Nachmuktsin is tearing apart the Yawunik and he's handing out the meat to the animals and the birds so that they can eat, one of the things that he does is he takes up the bones of the Yawunik. He takes the bones, the ribs of the Yawunik, and he distributes them around the area. And those bones, those ribs, they turn into the hoodoos. You know the hoodoos that you see around the territory? Especially that set of hoodoos on the north end of Columbia Lake at Dutch Creek, just before you get to Fairmont? Well, that's the bones, the ribs of the Yawunik. And so I, I'm sorry I forgot that part while I was actually telling the story. I, I got to, um, uh, to the end there and I realized I hadn't added that part in. So, so thank you for that. I, um, I shared with you at the beginning of the story or just before I started telling the story, what Elder Herman Alpine used to, to share with me. He used to say that this story, the Tanukha creation story could take three days to tell. And so when I think about that, you know, three days to tell a story, and I think about the story that I've just shared with you, and sometimes I think, you know, I bet you that very first day would have been dedicated to singing the songs and saying the prayers. Remember that first part of the story when the animals, the Tukskamna, are, are sharing what they will do for the human beings, and they're they're sharing their songs and their prayers. And so I really do believe that that first day of a three-day Tanakh creation story would be dedicated to just that. It could take a whole day to remember all of the songs and all of the prayers. And then I think about the second day. The second day, I think, would have been dedicated to the chase, chasing that Yawunik. Because there are so many place name stories that we Tanakh have 
I've only shared just a few of them with you tonight. But we have place name stories around those two rivers all the way up to the north and all the way down to the south that, that just all the way around those two rivers. And so I think the second day could be dedicated to just storytelling about place names in our homelands. And then, of course, the third day, I think, would probably be the celebration time. And so I'm always so happy to share the story with people. I, I know that, that my grandmother and my grandfather would be happy tonight to know that there's so many people in our area interested in our stories. I know that Wilfred Jacobs would be proud tonight knowing that this story is continuing to be told. And I'm so thankful to all of you, though those of you who have decided to make the Kootenays your home, our Tanaka homelands. I'm grateful to those of you who have decided to make this your home, that, that you made the choice tonight to come and to hear the story. And I'm so grateful to the nation people that are online here tonight. I can see a few of you out there. And so, I'm happy that you guys have joined in tonight, too, with me. It's, it's important to me. Thank you for being here with me tonight. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it back over to Pamela. Um, Pamela did uh, mention at the beginning of, of this evening that, that I, I'm, I'm willing to, to answer a few questions. If, if anybody has questions or anything they'd like to share, um, I'll let Pamela uh, take this part and and um, thank you so much for being here this evening. Mm -hmm.